Hey, Stephen, thanks for joining us today. As a way of getting started, give us a little background on yourself. Sure, Brian. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on with you, finally. Uh, you know, listen to a lot of episodes and, uh, you know, enjoy the show. So um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so get a bit of background on myself. You know, I'm a you know Christian, married uh, 10 years to my wife, uh, Chelsea, hilarious and uh, you know, beautiful wife. And I have two uh, wonderful girls, uh, Lila and Reese. They're six and nine and a couple of dogs. Annie and Hank. Uh, professionally, I have uh, been in you know, 17 years in the automotive industry to start, uh, you know, all in sales related functions and, uh, and then kind of migrated into the, to the freight and logistics world uh, about 11 years ago. <laughs> Where the excitement and, uh, is. <laughs> yeah, oh, it is. I mean, it's, it, today, you know, yeah. today it is. Sure. I mean, I had, I had no idea what it was when I entered it, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, a friend had introduced me to it and I had, uh, I had to Google it, you know, and find out like what, what is freight brokerage and, you know, what do they make? How do they do it? You know, how does everything happen? And, you know, I was always kind of uh, intrigued by how things delivered, you know, where did it come from and what was the, you know, you hear supply chain and, you know, what does supply chain actually mean? Like, where does it start from? And, and so it was, uh, it was really interesting to me when I realized that you could take any industry and it applies, you know, entirely. So it's, uh, you know, I've been doing that for about 11 years and, and been in all sorts of functions. I, I spent some time in operations, you know, really learning the way uh, logistics operates and, and um, you know, just uh, getting to know different people and, and different industries and how to apply. And it's been, uh, it's been fun, but, you know, now I'm with a company called Transfix. So I'm okay. building a sales team. And are they also in freight? Oh yeah, it's a, uh, we're a freight tech company. So it's, uh, you know, after uh, after 11 years, I figured out really what I wanted to where I wanted to be, you know, in, in terms of, uh, you know, the delicate balance between, you know, the people ex experience and, and, and the, the technology and how it applies. So it's been fun. Really excited. So what's the secret to being successful in this market? Oh, um, it's it's not much different than, you know, most sales, most professional salespeople. I mean, you, you have to understand what's happening. You have to understand your client. You have to be able to listen and, and really process what the problem it is they're trying to solve. So for me, it's, uh, you know, you got to be solutions focused hundred percent. I mean, that's, and, and then you have to, you have to understand what you do. So if you're applying their, you know, their troubles, their problems, you know, putting it towards what you do, then, you know, everybody wins. And what problem were you typically solving? doesn't have to be a current company, but in general. Sure. Well, I mean, in general, like you have, you have, I mean, you think about it, 70% of all goods in the United States, you know, they move from point A to point B on a truck. Uh, you know, so there's a million private carriers out there. There's, I think, 97, 98% of them have fewer than 20 trucks. So when you consider the tens of thousands of shippers, you know, companies trying to move those goods, it's difficult to manage, you know, to say the least. So it's to, to be in this position and to be able to have that impact on so many different types of industries, it's, uh, it's, it's fun. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy, but it is, you know, it's fun to be able to solve those problems and know that you actually have an impact on the bottom line. And who were you typically selling to? What was the persona, the title? To, they're typically transportation managers. Uh, you know, you have supply chain, chief supply chain offices sometimes. It depends on the size of the, of the business. Yeah. But, you know, and, and what I'm focused on is mid-market size uh, business. So you, you can deal with people that have a little bit more ability to make a decision than that, the likes of the enterprise customers that you're talking to, the, you know, the multi-billion dollar organizations. And did you get a lot of inbound or was it all or mostly outbound or? There's there's ten thousand of us in this country, so ten thousand of freight brokers, you know, mm -hmm. and, and to be able to match this up. So when you consider that, there's not exactly a, a knock at the door all the time for people to 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 you know to be sold, so to speak. I mean, you you really have to chase it. You really have to develop relationships. It's a lot of it is. I mean, everything's relationship driven, but it's uh you know it, it, not just on the shipper side, but but having relationships internally, you know, with the operations team because you know after all, if you're going to make a promise out there, it's the team that's going to put it together that that has to live up to it. So, and what do they care about? They care about you doing what you say you're going to do. Yeah. You know, we have a very short sales cycle, so to speak, you know, and when you consider uh, we have, we have an audition more or less, 
you know, it's, it's not necessarily like, this is the big contract. I mean, although you sell two big contracts, you want to get to larger contracts, but initially, especially in the mid market, you have to prove yourself and you only have a very, very short window to be able to do that. And if you don't, you're out. And if you do, you get another one and then you have to do it again and again and again. So, you know, it's, you know, it's really up to you to live up to it. So it's kind of more than sales. It's much more of making real sure that it's executed properly. It's kind of customer it's, success as well. And uh, I mean, you know. it's, it can be, you know, mm-hmm. in, in my particular role now it is because it's a very short aspect of that. I have a great operational team behind me that's able to, uh, to follow through. Um, but in, in, in the industry itself, you know, for, a lot of different uh, brokerages out there, they work what's called a cradle to grave style, which I've been in. And it's where you're responsible for it start to finish. But as you know, if you're responsible for everything, then your ability to grow and your ability to bring on new business, it really starts to limit. So I think we have a really good, you know, um, structure to where we can sell and bring new accounts on and get them familiar with the product, get them into the spot where an account manager can take it over from there. And then they're, more like the farming aspect of it. You know, we're in the more of a hunter role. And what about sales do you like? I, you know, it's not, I, when I was little, I wanted to be a firefighter. That's, that's what I wanted to do. And I realized it wasn't that I wanted to run into burning buildings and, you know, help people in the side of the road with accidents, but it was more so, I just like to be the guy to take care of the problem. Really? And okay. like, if it's something that's going on, you know, I want to, I want to be involved. I feel like I can make critical decisions. So I feel like in sales, you have one, you're talking to people all the time, you know, you're meeting new people. It's never the same. I'd get bored if I did the same thing all the time. <laughs> and I'm not that talented to have one of those type of skill sets. That's really neat. And, you know, I'm, I just know how to understand people and I know how to yeah. help. So that's, uh, you know, that's how what i really do you know i enjoy it no one really talks about that that much the variety of sales Mm -hmm. you know everyone kind of brings it up when i interview them but nobody really talks about it as like why they're in sales the variety and you know every day is a little different you don't get the monotony of most jobs sure did you sense that when you're in ops um well i mean in, in in this industry operations is different every day Because even you're still, even if you're on, even if you're dealing with the the carriers, the trucking companies or, or the drivers, someone's different all the time. You know, you have relationships in place that, that, that develop and you do tend to, you, you want to talk to more, more familiar people, but you're always having to establish new relationships because the freight always changes, you know, and it's, it, it, you can, you can really stay in a niche and work on specific freight, but the reality is, is that seasons change conditions change, market changes. So you're always going to have new people. You're always going to have new opportunities. You're always going to have new freight to deal with. And what makes a great rep in this space? I mean, we, we talked about the relationship stuff, but, but you really, I, that empathy of understanding the other person's situation. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's, that's, that's a, that's the biggest thing is empathy. You have to be empathetic. Uh, you have to be genuinely curious you because this is every person's different every dock is different every warehouse is different it's coming from this area of the world or that or it's internal you know so you have to you also you have to be self aware you have to know you know who you're talking to and and not you, you can't be braggadocious right. you know you can't be manipulative you can't be scripted it is a on the fly type of situation and where's that genuine curiosity come from for me yeah you <laughs> oh i mean i, I mean <laughs> it's uh i mean you're from boston right originally? i grew up there yeah yeah so so it's for me it, you know i'm the youngest of five boys you know uh it's i'm 10 years younger so if you recall the blizzard of 78 i'm a result of that i was kind of like an only child so my my four older that, brothers that was way before old. me yeah <laughs> It's, it's a long time ago, but it's, you know, just b- growing up in that environment, you know, I was really curious to know why they did it this way, why, you know, things happened the way they did and uh, just curiosity and having to figure it out on my own. Uh, you really don't get many questions answered. Hey, you know, where, where were you in the birth order last by 10 years? Wow. So that's what my brothers are 10 years older than me. So 
I was a total surprise. So I got to imagine that they kind of protected you or did you have to fight for every piece of chicken on the table? <laughs> no, it was, it was, it's funny. It was, uh, you know, I had protection at the top, which was the protection I wanted, but the ones right above me weren't protecting me. One of them, I really didn't get along with all the well, all that well when I was little. So he was the one that I challenged and, and, uh, but I had protection from above. So, you know, I was pretty smart to learn quickly who, who was on my side and who wasn't. Yeah. That's it. I saw the, the Medford High School on your LinkedIn profile. I'm going, what is Medford Mass? Yep. Yep. Yeah. South Medford. Yep. <laughs> At least you pronounce it right. That's and it's not Medfa. It's not Medfa. It's Medford. <laughs> South Medford. <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> and what motivated you? I mean, the problem solving is good, but you, you could have stayed in ops, right? That's a nice, much more of a consistent career. Um, yes it's and weird no. that I mean, people go in and out of sales. I'm, I'm always curious about that. I don't, I didn't really go out of sales. Yeah, it's, I think true. the title changed. Yeah. Um, and, and in this industry, it's kind of unsuspecting if you have an operations title sometimes. So it's, that's really what I was doing. I was wearing a lot of hats, yeah. you know? And so, uh, but, but yeah, <laughs> now I'm back into, I'm back into a true sales role, you know, as a player coach, you know, trying to grow a team. So it's, um, you know, it is, it is focused on sales and, and, and what brought me into it, you know, was taking that break. I, you know, I was a stay at home dad for about five months before I came to Transfix. That alone, I mean, you know, being, listening to podcasts like you, you know, reading books, different things. It, it reminded me of what got my blood pumping. So yeah. in order to make a decision to go back to work, I decided, you know, this is, this is what I really want to do. This is what I enjoy. I enjoy, you know, solving the problem on the front end of it. And, you know, having a, a, a nice technological, operational, supportive team behind me, I can sell. You know, I have the confidence to be able to sell. And why play your coach versus just give me a territory and let me do my thing? Well, I had done that, you know, in the past. Um, and when it's actually when I spoke with the, the uh, recruiter at the company that called me, we started talking through what they were doing. And I actually applied for an independent contributor role. And then as we started talking and he told me what they wanted to do and where they wanted to target and what the opportunity was, I, I being a coach, that, that, that's what really drives me. Like I, I love, I love helping people grow. I love to yeah. see them succeed. And I really love to be a part of it, you know, not just as an individual, but this was a good blend of both. So I still am rewarded for what I do, but also I'm rewarded for helping grow the team. And how about like the cultural differences between Boston and Atlanta? I mean, it's very I, well, I, different. I had a warm up. So I was I was 26 years in, in, in Boston area. Then I was in Charlotte, North Carolina for 16 years where I met my wife and started my family. And then we moved to Atlanta. So I, I had a warm up for the South. But I'll tell you, when I moved to the South from the beginning. I was I was shocked. You know, it's just a lot slower, a uh, lot slower pace, different environment. Um, the food's not as good. No offense <laughs> to anybody in the Charlotte area, but it's just not. Uh, you know, it's, so it's a lot to get used to, but I enjoy it. The weather's great. It's 90 today. Yeah. And just the, the pace and the politeness where, you know, people who aren't from Boston or who haven't visited is kind of, it's very up, abrupt. <laughs> it's, it's different. It's different. Let's put it this way. I was shocked the first time I was sitting at a stoplight and wasn't paying attention and no one beeped at me. Yeah. And I mean, that's, you know, that's crazy. Like to, to not looking around like no one beeped at me like i i'm good like, yeah. and and i actually i've become a lot more patient you know being down here and i think that's helped my career um being able to listen being able to slow down you know i i, I haven't slowed down that much but it's you know it's it that's really important you know especially you know talking talking with southerners there's they have a way of go of, of going about themselves being polite even when they're insulting so it's right. And, and, that's you know, it. and it's, it was different. It's an adjustment. And that, that's what people don't understand. Like Europeans, when they see America, they think it's all one glob. And it's like, no, it's. Yeah, it's we all not. wear cowboy hats. <laughs> it's a lot of, you know, because I covered, you know, I did startups. I always had huge territories. Right. And one day you're in Texas. The next day you're in Atlanta. The next day you're in Chicago. And it's like people are very different. 
Sure. And that's, but that's also what's great about this industry is, and, and part of what I'm doing with the sales team is I want to have people from different areas of the country, different backgrounds, different experience, because we have to connect all the dots across the country. Yeah. So we're talking to people in the Pacific Northwest. We're talking to people at the border in Texas. We're talking to people in the Northeast, you know, and it's, and you have to be able to, to, to improvise and, and to, and to, tone it down and, and to understand who you're talking to, where they are, where they, you know, a lot of these people are, you know, they were raised very differently than you were. And so, you know, that's part of why I want to have a, a pretty dynamic, diverse sales team. And I take it you've done a lot of hiring in the past. Yeah. Yeah. I've, 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 um, I've done a number of uh, the companies I've been with, I've been pretty much the hiring manager in my position. So it's uh, lots of interviews, lots of terminations. So, yeah. And have you come up with a system kind of, you know, what you look for in a rep? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I definitely, it, it, again, like that's that, you know, genuinely curious type of person, self-aware, coachable, um, uh, self-regulating, um, just it's somebody that's, that's a team player somebody that likes to, that, that likes to solve problems. Yeah. But I also, I, I, I like, I like them to have different temperaments too. You know, it's, you can't, not everybody can be go, go, go. Some people have to be more methodical and, you know, cause every customer is different, you know, yeah. we're not I, talking to salespeople sometimes. And how did you come to that conclusion on those ingredients? Did you make some mistakes along the way? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's, I mean, if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. And if you keep doing the same thing, you make the same amount of money for the rest of your life or you get stuck in, you know, that perpetual cycle of nothing. So it's uh, just trying to get to know what works and what doesn't being really cognizant of, of, of what people enjoy, you know, listening, not just, not just hiring, but, but throughout their career, you know, the one-on-ones, the, the, listening to how they feel about things and and you realize that it doesn't not it's square peg round hole sometimes and you can't have that yeah and because a lot of sales leaders it always seems to come down to that they like the candidate as opposed to does the candidate have some of these key ingredients i i think that's part of maturity as as yeah. a leader is you you don't and you know what i i used to feel like i had to be able to go to dinner with the, the, the team or, you know, have them at the house or, or something like that. I used to feel that that was necessary because it, I've seen it work. But the reality is, is we all need to check out every day and we all need to go home and do what we do. And I think as long as you respect everybody's personal life and you allow them to live a personal life, and you don't have to be their best friend. You just have to encourage them to get better. And, and just be what they need, you know, and really have an unemotional approach to it in a lot of ways. Because trying to find people who have genuine curiosity is not easy because it's kind of a, an advanced adult skill that. Sure. Sure. And, and it's, um, it's, it's pretty common, you know, in this industry to have post-college grads, you know, looking to get their career started. Um, and it takes a while to really grow your, 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 your customer base, and it takes a while to, to mature. And so, you know, it, on the flip side, it's not easy to hire people that have been in the industry for a long time, because they're pretty satisfied with where they're at. Yeah. But I think, you know, given, given the situation that we're in with, with the ability from a tech standpoint, um, we, it, you can still have a lot of that experience and apply it to what we do, um, you know, from, from, a, from, a, from a tech standpoint, you know, digital, hey. digital environment. And what's the hardest part of your deal? I'd say getting, once you have the opportunity and you deliver on it, it's, it's really just being able to expand on that. I mean, you have to be, you have to be price conscious, but it's, that's not the most important thing as in any sale. I mean, it, the, the, your clients, if they're focused on price, it's very hard to maintain because there's going to be opportunities where you're, you're not, as cheap as somebody else might be. And, and a lot, and in the case with supply chain, it's usually the most important thing to a lot of these companies, if they're not dealing with a commodity or a product that's, that's 
you know, of great value. You know, if they're if moving a truckload of recyclables, for instance, they're really focused on on how inexpensive it is, right. you know, because it bites into their bottom dollar. Whereas if you're moving some heavy, expensive, you know, uh, machinery in some sort, you know, they want to make sure it's there safely and, and, and on time, you know, so it's it's you got to focus a little bit more on the, that aspect of it. So. So does price typically come up as a false objection or is just like I'm busy is it's, for like, it's usually the, the objection usually is I'm happy with who I'm with, or I don't use brokers. But the reality is, is that if, if you, if you're scaling your business or you have, you know, business that's existed, that's moving, not everybody can, you, there's going to be someone like me or our, our company along with several other companies that are working with any individual shipper. Yeah. So it, you're not the only one in, in, in most cases, you know, if you are the only one, that's a, that's a heck of a deal, you know, but you, and you still have to stay honest because there's 10,000 more of me trying to go out there and take my business. And so how do you get that, their curiosity about what you do and what you can do for them and, and get it, away from, we don't use brokers. Well, it's got to be, it, it, you have to one, do your research on, on the company that you're dealing with. Yeah, there's enough, there's enough info out there now to, to really understand like what the company is they, everybody does a social media, has a social media presence. So just connecting and understanding, like, what are the, what are they trying to accomplish from, from an, from a organizational standpoint? And then what are the goods that, that, that they're moving? What is, what is the product that they have? You know, when you think about where does it end up and if it's ending up at a certain certain point or a certain party, you can kind of know, you know, the little details there that, that are important to them. And then you have to ask a lot of questions and, and, and you know, one, keep them on the phone or, or, or a range of time or set that meeting for the time when you can talk, you know, and get them to open up. And do they answer the phone? I would think they would. One of the few jobs. Yeah. I mean, phone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of gatekeepers out there. There's a lot of gatekeepers, but it's, uh, you know, for the most part, I mean, you can get them on the phone, but you through LinkedIn and, you know, there's ways to, to get in touch and, yeah. and a lot repeat and referral is huge, you know, because there's people that are in that position, they tend to socialize, socialize with people in that, in that position. So it's always, you have to ask for, for referrals. And if you're not asking for referrals, then you're doing yourself a disservice and your company. Yeah. Is there a key in your industry to do that? I assume it's after you've delivered for them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, you have to prove yourself. And when you prove yourself, you, you know, they, they'll introduce you to others or, you know, they'll, you know, the other thing too, is that you have a lead every time you pick up from somewhere or deliver somewhere. You know, if, if it's, if you have the ability to call on those, those places, you have good news to tell them, you know, and that's that, speaking of that's, that's really like what we do is, is, is a more targeted approach to who we're dealing with. We're not just smiling and dialing businesses in a specific area. It's business that ships this commodity because it benefits one of our existing accounts. And was that a struggle to let people let you do that? Because most managers, it's just, you know, get the dials in. No, it's, and I think that's, that's part of why I came to Transfix is because that was their approach. We were built on the backs of a small number of salespeople with enterprise accounts. We're one of the few out there that went to the enterprise level first. And then with all of that business that's moving, it allows the mid-market or the SMBs to be able to take advantage of all those trucks that are already moving on the road. The, the best time to load a truck is when it's already been unloaded. So if you're shipping on a certain lane, you know, to or from, you have the ability to reload that driver. They don't have to worry about dead time or deadhead miles. And do your clients, before they get to work with you, view you as a commodity? Or they want probably to. more like a probably more like a nuisance, I would think. Right. <laughs> you got to work your way up to a commodity. Well, yeah, you got to become a commodity. But once you are, I mean, it, it is it is a very loyal industry when you have. A good relationship and it's you know it's uh it's it's one of those things where you know you can trust somebody uh it's there's somebody that you can lean on and and a lot of times you're 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 one of the ways you get in is when someone else fails so yes exactly. service it's service failures happen yeah service failures happen all the time and when they do you want to be the one that they call you want to be the guy you know the person that they can lean on in, in, in tight situations and then you have to deliver. Because a lot of us are in that space where it's like, if somebody's happy, it's really hard to get them interested. Sure. But, 
but if somebody, if their current vendor messes up, whether it's their fault or not, they're open-minded. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And, 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 and you love those calls. You love those situations, you know, and, 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 you know, it's a lot of it is being in the right place at the right time. Like you mentioned, I mean, and, and if you are consistent and you're, and you're, and you're not just calling for no reason and you're not just, you know, sitting there waiting and you give them something to think about, you know, like you you said before, it's, you, what are you selling right now? You're not selling the deal. You're selling the opportunity mm -hmm. to have another opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And what's kept you in this space? Because you spent a lot of time on auto and now in yeah. logistics, it's, I guess you'd call it. It's sustainable. The industry is sustainable. Everything. We're yeah. always always going to need product delivered we're always going to need product picked up um you know whether it's you know a truck or an airplane or a, a boat or whatever everything has to move um you know so i think the industry itself is 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 it's pretty sustainable over time and i like i like the domestic aspect of it I, you know i've been in the international before and i i like i like the pro the the process that we have in this country and i think that we have a real good opportunity not just to deliver but to keep small businesses moving you know i think that's really important too you know and would you like to stay player coach or would you like to be exclusively leadership um i think uh, you know over time i'd like to get into a more leadership position you know, if, yeah. if I didn't, I would just be a player. I would just, I just want to be an individual contributor. Um, but it's a, it, I, I really have a passion for helping other people grow in their career. And yeah, that's important to me. Yeah, because player coach is always hard because you kind of measured on results. But if you're dragged away from that to help other people. It, yeah, I mean, it's don't look as good. Yeah. It, true, you're true. But if their if their results continue to rise, yeah. you know, and you are producing, yes. uh, you know, that's what, that's what the, the, you know, the key is. I mean, you, you know, you want to succeed. Like I tell, I tell the guys that, that, that I work with the, the team is I, I don't want to be the top rep. I hope to be competing for the top. And I hope that everybody else can be the top. Like everybody should be able to, you know, and if I'm doing that, then I'm doing my job. You know, I think it's uh, the comp plan set up that way, too. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, you know, the deal. I mean, it's, uh, you know, when you, you work your comp plan and, and whatever, whatever they want you to do, that's what you have to do. I mean, I want I'm not stupid. I want to make the most money I can, <laughs> 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 you know, so it's but that's that's the name of the game, though. It, it really it's fulfilling to help people grow. And, and I've seen a lot of former employees that I've coached and, you know, worked with that have gone on to own their own businesses, be successful and, you know, still make a ton of money. And I, I think that's the uh, that's what's important, you know. And what what do you think the best change you made along your career was that kind of took your game to the next level? Uh I would say switching to, to the supply chain and logistics industry, just making industry. that transition. Yeah. The yeah. industry coming to the industry, um, you know, from the automotive industry, I, I loved, I love the automotive industry. I hated the retail, but business to business is really what, what I love. And, and, you know, being, being in the position to, to join this company and matching technology with the industry expertise, I think we have a heck of a product. So it's, it's something that, you know, I think, I wouldn't do it if it didn't make it a little bit easier. And it's something that takes me to the, you know, to the next level. So cool. it's exciting. Hey, I appreciate your time today. Uh, please let everybody know where they can connect with you. And if you're looking for people. Uh, yeah, certainly. Yes. Transfix.io. Uh, check the career pages out. Um, you know, we have, I think, 36 positions open, wow. not just from a sales perspective, but, you know, in, in tech, in people, in operations, you know, and also on LinkedIn, uh, Stephen Bartolini with a PH and good luck spelling my last name. <laughs>